Uh, today, we're asking the question, who is your Deborah? We're saying that you need a support team to get through life. Life is difficult, and it helps to have people who care about you and people who will uh, be on your team to get you through some of the rough spots. We do need each other. We want to be connected. And so we're having this series of sermons, uh, which uh, actually concludes next week on uh, relationships. But today we're looking at who is your Deborah? And we would like to ask, how well do you know this story? How well do you know the story of Deborah? Deborah is, the story of Deborah is one chapter in the Bible. And, then, and that's chapter 4 of Judges. And then chapter 5, we find the song of Deborah. So chapters 4 and 5 basically are about Deborah. Specifically, chapter 4 talks about the experience. And then chapter 5 is she's a songwriter. And, and she writes a song, and it's there for you to, to, to benefit from. But how well do you know the story of Deborah? And you can turn on your clicker, and uh, maybe you know it very well. That's A. Uh, you know something about it. That's B. Uh, you've heard of it, and maybe that's all. You know someone in, someone in the Bible's named Deborah, and maybe that's all you know. Or D, you don't know anything about it. So how much do you know about Deborah? We'll give you uh, 15 seconds to answer, and you can begin now. We have about five seconds left. How well do you know the story of Deborah? So 106 of you, 107 of you responded, and this is what you said. Only nine of you said that you knew it very well. And then uh, there are more than 30 of you who said you know it somewhat. And then uh, there's a group that's heard of it, but that's about all they know. And then uh, you know nothing about it. There's a small group of that. You never heard of Deborah. All right, well, most of you are not very familiar with this story. It looks like only nine of you said, I know the story well. So I specifically want to talk to those nine of you today and see if I can teach you anything new about Deborah. Let's look at what the Bible has to say. Who is your Deborah? First of all, I'd like to say, I think Deborah in the Bible is a number of things, but she is really a spiritual mentor. Everybody needs a mentor, especially a spiritual mentor. You know, if you uh, go out uh, and you want to do something, you want to be a carpenter, for example, uh, or a plumber or electrician, you have to work as an apprentice first. And uh, in the state of California, I believe it's five years you have to work in order to, to be able to get a license. But you have to be an apprentice first of all. In fact, in this country, if you go back to the turn of the century, a century if you wanted to be a doctor... Uh, you, you would be an apprentice. Uh, today, they call them residents or interns. But at the turn of the century, you didn't even have to, to go to medical school. You just were an apprentice. So it, having a mentor is something that we're used to doing. But what a neat idea to have a spiritual mentor. When I started out in ministry, uh, I had a spiritual mentor. And uh, they... Uh, the, the, conference officials sent me to a church uh, to be an associate pastor and so I learned from one of the best and then uh, uh, since I was a slow learner they sent me to another church as associate pastor and uh, again uh, had a super uh, pastor that I learned from uh, so I have been an apprentice and I've also been a mentor in uh, one uh, conference I worked in, they asked me to, to mentor uh, one of the younger pastors. So it's a great experience to be both an apprentice and a mentor. You need a spiritual mentor. That's what Deborah was. 
the story of Deborah. Well, first of all, most of you said you didn't know this story very well, but she was the only female judge. So if you look in the Bible, you find out that she lived in a male-dominated society, and yet she was a judge. That's pretty unusual. We find out that she was also a prophet, one of several women in the Bible that are called prophets. Again, that was usually the role of a man. You know, we, we have our prophets like uh, Ezekiel and Daniel, and we, in the New Testament, we have John, the revelator, who is a prophet. But here we have Deborah in a male dominated society who is a prophet. She is also a wife. She's married. And she's a songwriter. And some people believe that she had children. We're, we don't know that for sure. The, the Bible does talk about her being a mother, but it may be in a more of a generic sense, a mother to Israel. But Possibly she also had children. Well, that's who Deborah was. But that, of course, is just part of the story. Uh, you need to have a friend go with you. And the story about Deborah is about having a friend to go with, uh, with uh, Deborah. Uh, a friend, in fact, says, I'm going to go and I want you to come along. And Deborah agrees. Uh, did, you, did you ever want to go somewhere, but you didn't want to go alone? You wanted a friend to go with you? How about to the powder room? Isn't it strange, guys, how women can never go by themselves if you're out with a group? You know, they always go together. Or to go to the doctor's office. Uh, Often we do go by ourselves, but sometimes we want a friend to go with us. I remember uh, not too long ago, uh, it was a, a little more than a year ago when, when I was in the hospital and, and uh, there was some follow-up work being done and I had to go to the doctor's office. And uh, I actually wanted my wife to go with me or I wanted my daughter to go with me, the one that's in medical school so that I could be sure that I was really listening to the doctor and was able to understand uh, what the doctor was saying because I wasn't quite sure I would remember. Did you ever go on vacation by yourself? Well, it's much more fun to go with someone, isn't it? I love to go on vacation, but I don't like going by myself. I love to go with someone. And sometimes going to court... That's, that can be a challenging situation. You want someone to go with you. Sometimes even you might want an attorney to go with you. Or what about a blind date? You know, you don't want to go on a blind date by yourself. Usually, you double date the first time. Or to go to a play or a movie. I've, in my lifetime, I've actually gone to a movie once or twice by myself, but... Boy, it's, it's a lot more fun when uh, Barbara goes with me because she can explain the plot to me and all that stuff, you know. <laughs> and then the same thing with shopping. You know, it's more fun if someone will go with you. Or, uh, you know, recently we had uh, Andrew who, who left and went into the uh, military and uh, he wanted to go in with a friend. I think maybe that didn't quite work out, but that was the plan that he was going to go with a friend. They were going to go together into the military. And then going to a party. I've been to parties by myself, and probably you have too, but it's more fun to go to, with someone to a party. And then when you go away to camp, usually you're a little kid, and it's more fun to go with a friend. In fact, it's kind of scary to go by yourself. And then when you go swimming, you're supposed to swim with someone, right? In case something happens, you get a cramp or whatever. It's a safety thing. You need to have a friend go with you. And then uh, when I asked Barbara about this, she says, oh, a wedding. Nobody wants to go to a wedding by themselves. 